Now, let me warn you, as I demonstrate these protocols, it's gonna take time because there's a lot of information. You may find that it gets a bit boring. If you do, then do this yourself. Have a look at the protocols yourself and try and understand the messages. But I'm gonna spend quite a bit of time going through layer two, layer three, layer four, and the layer seven applications to try and help you understand what's going on. This kind of stuff is really important to understand. It's basic nitty gritty, foundational stuff. Can be boring, but it's important to understand. You can't understand networking if you don't understand this stuff. So spend the time learning your protocols. You will need to put in the effort and spend time learning your protocols if you really want to understand networking. If you wanna become an ethical hacker, you need to understand the protocol so that you can hack them. If you wanna become a network engineer, you need to understand the protocols to be able to configure network devices properly and troubleshoot network devices or troubleshoot network issues. If you wanna become an, a good application developer, you need to have an understanding of the underlying applications. Many nightmares are caused today for network engineers because of badly written applications. Application developers assume, some of them who write bad applications, that there's unlimited bandwidth. There is no unlimited bandwidth. If you write a poor application, it's gonna make a network engineer's life very difficult. As a lot of old network engineers will say, it's always the network's fault and all the rubbish comes from the top and lands on our heads because people will blame the network even when there's an application that's at fault. Make sure that you spend your time learning your protocols so that you can prove it's not a network issue, but it's an application issue. There were different competing groups that were clashing about what was important and which protocols should win the so-called protocol wars. So we had the OSI group with their protocols, we had the TCP IP group with their protocols. TCP IP is one basically. So for a long time we used the so-called OSI model to discuss TCP IP protocols, but the TCP IP protocols is what we use in the real world. We use IP version four, we use TCP, we use UDP, we use IP version six, TCP UDP once again. We use IP protocols in the real world. So there's this disconnect, if you like, between the OSI model and the protocols that are actually used in the real world. So now in the new version of the CCNA, we have what is called, if you like, a hybrid model or a combined model of OSI and TCP IP model. So don't get confused. There was originally a four layer TCP IP model. We have a seven layer OSI model, but now we've ended up in summary with a five layer TCP IP model, five layers, but we refer to the top layer as layer seven because it originated from the OSI model. So I'm gonna talk about some of the details now, but in summary, make sure that when you study for the exam, you understand that there's a TCP IP model, but today we talk about five layers instead of the original four layers that were discussed in the original RFC or request for comments. Request for comments are a way that people discuss new protocols and agree on what a protocol should be. A protocol is basically a way to communicate. So if I'm communicating with you in English, we've agreed a certain way to communicate. If I suddenly switch to another language and say, Uchanet van dag, you won't necessarily understand what I'm saying because that language uses a different communication stack, if you like, or a different way to communicate versus English. We have to agree on the protocol or language that we're going to discuss. So RFCs allow us to agree on what protocol will be implemented by different vendors so that it's kind of standardized. In the old, old days, we didn't have standardized protocols. Every vendor did what they wanted, but that was a total mess because you had different networks that couldn't communicate with each other. These days we wanna have one network such as the internet that allows us all to communicate with one another. And that works because we've agreed on standards in the industry. So different vendors, Cisco, HP, Juniper, etc., will create equipment that can talk to each other based on a standard. So in summary, you need to know TCP IP model, which today consists of five models for this current CCNA, reflects the real world more than say previous models. We have the OSI model, which consists of seven layers. Don't get hung up on the individual layers. And I'm gonna show you this practically using Packet Tracer. Understand how the layers work. 
you may get questions saying, okay, so at which layer of the OSI model do you find HTTP, which is a protocol used for surfing the internet? If you go to a website such as facebook.com, you'll be using HTTP. Actually, today it's HTTPS, which is encrypted HTTP. It's more secure. That is an example of what we would call a layer seven protocol. But you also need to understand in networking that we'll discuss devices such as hubs, and we'll say hubs are layer one devices. Hubs aren't really used today, but I'm gonna discuss them just to give you an understanding because when you use a wireless network, things kind of change with Wi-Fi 6 or the latest release of Wi-Fi, but previously everything acted as a pure hub in the air. In other words, only one person could communicate at a time. Wi-Fi is still like a hub because it's a shared medium, the air is shared, So you need to understand the principles of hubs, even though we don't use them physically today, as in connecting cables to a hub, but the air in wireless networks is kind of like a hub. We have switches, which are called layer two devices. Actually, some people would debate whether switches are a thing, but we won't get into that. We have bridges, which are layer two devices. We have routers, which are layer three devices and we have what are called layer three switches. So notice I'm using terms here, layer one device, layer two device, layer three device. We have a layer four protocol, which could be TCP or UDP, and then we have layer seven applications, such as HTTP, FTP, TFTP, Telnet, SSH, etc. Don't get hung up on those. You need to know those protocols. You need to know where they fit in the so-called TCP IP model or OSI model. It'll come to you. As we do a whole bunch of labs, and I'm gonna show you the protocols practically in Packet Tracer, you'll see where those different protocols reside or sit, if you like, in the model. Now, I need you to know some terms for the CCNA exam. It's basically how we refer to stuff, if you like, at the different layers. So when data is sent at the physical layer, we're sending zeros and ones across the physical layer. That's known as bits. So the bits of data are represented on a fiber cable as light. So as a basic analogy, if there's light, it means a one. If there's no light, it means a zero. So zero one would represent our bits or our binary values. On copper, do we have electricity or not? So most fundamental example would be if there is electricity on a wire, it means one. If there's no electricity, it means a zero. So think of this as a light going on and a light going off. Is it on, is it off? And that represents our bits. So at layer one, we have bits. On top of that, we have frames. So at layer two, we talk about a frame. So when we're sending data through an ethernet switch, which is a so-called layer two device, we are sending frames. So I'll use these terms. Frame is getting switched from one port on a switch to another. So when you hear the term frame, remember, layer two. At layer three, we have what are called packets. So a router, which is a layer three device, will route packets from one interface to another. And at layer four, we have segments. So layer one is bits, layer two is frames, layer three is packets, layer four is segments. And then at layer five to seven, we have an application.